In Texas, Saronic Technologies is building something the U.S. Navy hasn't seen in decades. Raw industrial speed. Welcome to Port Alpha, America's first naval shipyard purpose-built to mass-produce autonomous warships. And it's already humming. With more than $600 million in fresh funding and a $4 billion valuation, Saronic is turning out vessels faster than conventional defense primes. No bureaucratic drag, no production logjams, just a growing fleet of fully autonomous surface combatants designed to operate without crews, hangars, or blackout windows. The math is straightforward. China has volume. The United States needs velocity. While Beijing fields more than 350 ships, Port Alpha is engineered to close that gap in years, not decades. Modular construction, AI-driven production lines, and autonomy designed for frontline deployment, not just for lab demos. These platforms are moving from prototype to contract. They're being readied for the Pacific. This is Port Alpha. Let's walk through what it's building, one vessel at a time. 6. Spy Glass Think of six feet of trouble that slips where manned boats can't. Spyglass is a pocket picket. Deploy from a beach, push off from an RHIB, or run it in wolf packs and watch the comms light up. It hauls up to 40 pounds, sprints at 20 knots, and patrols a 30 nautical mile bubble. Perfect for harbor denial, close in reconnaissance, or swarm tactics that make a patrol boat's watch officer do a double take. Small, modular, and fully recoverable by larger ships, the selling point is speed and cost. One crate, one mission solved. Its origin story matters. A former naval officer built the first unit in a garage to prove a point. Deliver steel, not slides. Spyglass became Saronic's calling card. A real hull, real autonomy, real missions, showing the Navy that startup tempo can deliver actionable combat power. Why size matters. At six feet, Spyglass slips into mangrove cuts, marina alleys, and pier shadows, the cluttered spaces where larger hulls can't operate and sensors struggle. Launch from shore, a workboat, or a mothership, recover, refit, and relaunch in hours. Tempo is the weapon. 20 knots in a tight channel is lively. Accelerate, reposition, vanish behind harbor traffic. Inside its 30 nautical mile bubble it completes the whole loop. Ingress, observe, strike, exfil. 40 pounds buys options. EO slash IR for ID, compact EW to disrupt comms, a demolition charge for sabotage or fouling, even a loitering payload for standoff effects. It's a micro dagger, fast in, surgical out. 5. Cutlass. The bigger sibling with sharper elbows, 14 feet, roughly 200 pounds of payload, and a 300 nautical mile reach. Cutlass graduates from demo toy to network node. It seeds smaller drones, builds an adaptive C2 mesh, and classifies surface contacts while remaining outside the splash zone. Same 20 knot top speed, but 10 times spyglass's range. With its own mast and radar, Cutlass doesn't just follow orders. It sees, tracks, classifies, and maintains target threads without a human babysitter. The brains run on a microservices stack with open modularity, so payload swaps are as simple as changing apps. EO slash IR today, EW tomorrow, loitering munitions Friday. This isn't theory. In joint exercises like IBP 24.1, Cutlass launched Altius loitering munitions at sea, mid-ocean handoffs with no drama. That's not a science fair trick. That's a floating missile caddy doing real work in blue water. Operational cadence is straightforward. Launch from pier or mothership, run a corridor at 20 knots, south sensors, pass tracks, and if authorized, release a loitering bird. Recover, swap the module, send it back out. Cutlass is the middleweight that holds the ring. Too small to be a tempting missile target, too capable to ignore, and unapologetically effective against anything that strays into its lane. 4. Corsair. Meet 24 feet of multi-mission muscle. Corsair tops 35 plus knots, hauls about 1,000 pounds, and reaches beyond 1,000 nautical miles. That's real endurance and real punch. This is the platform that bridges coastal hustle and true blue water persistence. Tow sensor arrays, shadow a frigate, or park a surprise just beyond someone's horizon. What the hull buys you is depth. With a 1,000 nanometers range Corsair moves from short hops to long patrols, sitting on station for days, running sea lanes end-to-end, -end, 
or handing off between task groups without losing tempo. The center bay is a modular workhorse, swap in sonar arrays, EO slash IR masts, compact EW suites, radar packages, or a lightweight offensive rack depending on the mission. One sortie it's a quartermaster, slinging spares, fuel, and parts to ships that can't leave station. The next, it plays decoy, towing emitters and reflectors to fake a larger signature and force the adversary to waste targeting cycles. Change the loadout and it becomes a strike caddy, carrying loitering munitions ready to pop the moment a track goes hostile, while the mothership keeps its VLS closed and cozy. When quiet is required, Corsair drag sensors, streaming sonar, laying buoys, and stitching a live picket line across the water. Need a shadow? At 35 plus, Nazi can pace a frigate, mirror maneuvers, and keep eyes on a contact just beyond the horizon. Versatile, fast, and dangerous by design. 3. Mirage. Now we're into proper ship silhouettes. At roughly 40 feet, Mirage operates like a crude vessel for broad area tasking. Maritime security, picket duty, deception ops, and escort missions inside a mixed, uncrewed screen. With 2,000 nautical miles of range, 35 plus knot speed, and the capacity for about 2,000 pounds of payload, Mirage is assigned sectors, not errands. It's built for persistent presence, heavier sensor suites, and scalable firepower when the brief goes kinetic. Robust, long-legged, and mission-ready. Pair two Mirages together and they write their own patrol pattern, keeping watch while your destroyer conserves its missiles for the real fight. What the hull delivers is command presence without the crew bill. Mirage runs on the same browser-based command layer and mission-level AI as its smaller cousins, so there's no need to retrain the fleet, just scale the hull, scale the appetite. Its modular lanes carry serious hardware, a medium radar array for surface tracking, a tall EO-slash-IR mast for positive identification, compact EW packages for deception, or even a rack of loitering munitions when observe and report needs teeth. In escort duty, Mirage acts as a wingman, screening a frigate, mirroring turns at 35-plus knots, and calmly handing off threats to shooters. Two Mirages form a habit. Three form a net. They cross queue, swap tracks, and rotate stations on that 2,000 nautical mile leash, ensuring your high-value hulls save fuel, crews, and missiles for the fight that truly matters. Sector assigned. Sector secured. 2. Cipher. Now we step up to 60 feet of industrial utility. Cipher isn't just a boat, it's a quiet, moving problem set for anyone tracking the board. With a 10,000 pounds payload, speeds above 35 knots, and a 3,000 nautical mile reach, Cipher swallows a full 20-foot ISO container, plugs it into ship power, and carries the gear you'd rather not risk sailors on, comms, EW suites, medical modules, spares, or even a drone magazine. The numbers tell the story. A length, 60 feet, 18 meters. A top speed, 35 plus knots, 65 km slash h. A range, 3,000 nautical miles, 5, 500 km. A payload, 10,000 pounds, 4.5 metric tons. A standard ISO compatible, no custom racks, no drama. What the frame buys you is industrial utility at fleet speed. Cypher runs with a frigate, shifts sectors between dawn and lunch, and threads into waters where a replenishment ship won't dare go. Roll on a new container, a sensor lab, a drone workshop, a maintenance bay with printers and spares, and roll it off when the mission's done. Same browser-based control, same mission-level AI as its smaller siblings. No need to teach the fleet a new language, just scale the payload and hit deploy. How this plays out at sea. In contested waters, Cypher is the ghost forklift, a silent workhorse that appears where you need it most. It sprints ahead of a convoy, drops fuel bladders and spare parts onto a reef or shoal, then loops back to hand off a strike package from its container bay. Need repairs delivered to a damaged patrol craft without a risky crew transfer? Cypher does that. It tails a task group at 35 plus knots, acting as a roaming magazine for loitering munitions and a relay tower for swarming assets. After a cyclone, it arrives with a medical ISO, generators humming, and clean water systems stuffed into the other half of the bay. Utility at speed, no fuss, no sailors at risk. 1. Marauder, the heavy hitter. 
At 150 feet, Marauder carries 40 metric tons, two 40-foot ISOs, or 420-footers, three 500 NM range, and 18 KT transit, industrial-scale payload and endurance. Park it on a choke point, task it to a force, or use it as an unmanned quartermaster. Missiles, mines, radar nodes, fuel bladders, repair shops, drone magazines, or medical ISOs, roll on, roll off. Marauder moves with task groups, holds sectors, and redeploys whole capability sets hundreds of miles overnight, no constant escorts required. It uses the same autonomy stack as the smaller vessels, so operators don't need retraining, just assign a bigger job. Built in Franklin, Louisiana, Golfcraft reborn as Syrinx's MUSV line, upgrades aim to produce up to 50 autonomous vessels a year, one on station, one outbound, one inbound, and logistics becomes posture. If Port Alpha delivers, Marauder scale ships will multiply U.S. naval reach and tempo. Ready for speed at scale?